Hi guys, this is SDJRSNF88 speaking with a look at a new project constructing the GRA models Char 2C tank in 176 scale. So I thought this video would be a bit different to the usual model railway projects um, purely because it is of constructing a military kit. However, when this project is complete, it will have a model railway connection. Now, as you can imagine, I've sourced this kit in 176 scale, which means it is 00 scale or 009 scale, uh, which means it will fit in perfectly on my World War I trench railway Amiens 1918. Now, this is where the tank's history is quite interesting, and it's one of the reasons why I really wanted to find a model of this tank. Now the Char 2C is one of the only um, ever super tanks to enter production. Now this tank uh, weighed a massive 69 tonnes, had a 12-man crew and was originally conceived during World War I. However, it never entered service during um, this period. It actually was put into production in 1921 and actually briefly saw service in World War II. Now the reason for choosing this particular tank, apart from that, is um, I thought it would just be something different to have on the layout. And I know a number of you guys were really, really interested in my armoured train build, which I did back last year. And some of you pointed out that it looked a bit familiar from a certain World War I game. I know a couple of um, my younger fans are um, uh, interested in online gaming, and there's a game series called Battlefield and they did a World War I game back a couple of years ago called Battlefield 1 and while the behemoth was of course a Russian armoured train and another behemoth in the game was of course the Char 2C tank and they're giving the what if if World War I had carried on into 1919. Now these tanks would have entered service in 1919 had the war continued so I thought it would be a nice little talking point to include on the layout. Now these tanks um, are really, really interesting. As mentioned, they have a 12-man crew. They had two turrets. You had the main turret on the front and then you had a smaller turret on the rear. Uh, this is also included in the model. And this is something that I thought would be something a bit different. They also had uh, special railway wagons um, when being transported. As the tanks were so big, they actually had these two special bogies which actually clipped onto the front and onto the rear of the tank. And I thought that might also potentially be a nice little project. Uh, and, of course, a wagon load for one of my ROD trains in the not-too-distant future. So, I came about getting this kit at the Bristol Model Railway Exhibition, which I was displaying Amiens at. And there's a chap there who runs GRA models and he produces a load of military kits uh, made from resin and he had a wide selection of World War I and World War II products. As you can imagine I was really really interested in the World War I stuff and this is not one of the only items that I purchased. I also have purchased a full 009 scale World War I uh, workshop train which again is on my workbench to build. But as soon as I saw he had a model of a Char 2C tank in 176 scale, I just had to make the purchase. Uh, and it really is a nice little kit. As you can see, it comes in this lovely little box. And um, he was telling me how he produces them. He actually gets all scale drawings and then he uh, models them in card before then making moulds at resin, uh, which then the resin pieces are printed into which uh, these kits are then made. So without further ado, we're going to open up the box and see what we get inside. So here are the components that are in the box. And as you can see, there's not as many as what you would find with your average, say, sort of Airfix style kit. Now as you can see here, we've got the main uh, piece, which is the hull. And there are a number of little pieces um, that fit onto that inside there. We then have a number of other little packets. Um, this one here contains the machine gun sponsons and the uh, spot lamp, which would have gone on the front of the tank, uh, and a number of little bits of um, engine cover and stuff like that. We then have two packets here, which I presume contain uh, the variants of the engine. Now, there are a number of options you can do to um, produce different variants of the engine uh, covers that we used on top of these tanks. And I'm going to research which one would have been more suited for the First World War. I'm thinking these here, because these look very similar to what they fitted to um, some of the British tanks to stop grenades from perching on top of the hull. 
So I'm thinking these would probably been uh, more suited for uh, a World War One environment. So I'm possibly thinking these uh, would have been on a World War One design if they had entered service during that time period. We then have the turrets, and as you can see here, we got the. Uh, the main turret and we also have the smaller rear turret there and then these are one molded piece and there's also a nice little uh, I think it's a brass uh, wire which runs down the center of these resin pieces to give a lot of strength to the actual barrels which is a really really nice touch there's quite a bit of flash on these uh, parts so this will all need to be removed and then we come on to two of the biggest pieces which are of course the tracks now this is really really clever uh, I was talking to the chap on how uh, these parts are made and he mentions that he made uh, an individual uh, track out of card and then he placed it in the mold and joined them all together so this one uh, mold this one p little mold made um, a mold for many which then went into the actual mold to produce this so it looks like it's all individual pieces when really this is just one solid mold uh, it really really is a clever way of doing it and it keeps all the details well so it really really is impressive again there's a bit of flash on this which will need removing which I'm going to move on to now Right, so I've been chiseling away at the components now for well over an hour and as you can see around the kit itself there is a lot of flash that comes off of this uh, being resin mouldings. Most of this comes off quite easily, this little piece here came off the bottom of the hole and you can simply just pry that off of your fingers. Uh, other bits however are a bit more stubborn. So here is the main turret and as you can see there is a big blob of resin which is from part of the moulding which is stuck on the back here and I've got to go get a hacksaw to gently hack this off. I've tried getting this off with a, a little scalpel but it's not working, it really is very very thick so I'm going to get a, a, a little hacksaw and uh, cut that off. But apart from that it's come off uh, mostly uh, quite well. So as you can see the, the tracks are all done now. Um, you've got to be very very careful around the edges making sure not to trim off any of the actual tracks themselves. Uh, I've also done the little rear turret which I've temporarily fitted into its, um, its little hole there. And as you can see uh, with the little plate here which also holds up the front turret if I put those two pieces there and this is the engine cover I'm going to go for the little um, cowling covered engine uh, version on this type as I think it looks a lot more World War One uh, World War One-y I should say uh, than the um, just exposed engine parts up there so if I pop that there that there and there you can see the tank is starting to come together. Of course the hull needs to be a lot higher, it will sit a lot higher in the frames um, uh, when done and of course the turret will, will sit level and then there's all the little um, details that need to go on a, a couple of the panels and stuff. Um, but apart from that it's really starting to look like what it um, is supposed to do. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to continue hacking away and get rid of the rest of the flash on things like the engine cowling and all the little pieces and of course the turret itself. And then once that is done, I'm then going to assemble the main bits on the frame here, so such as the, the turret and the engine. And then I'm going to prime these pieces here. Now what this will allow me to do is, once this is all primed, is uh, basically then get on to painting the actual tank. Which I'm not sure what livery to go for yet. Uh, maybe a dark French grey, or maybe even a sort of World War One khaki colour. Uh, just in case they were um, placed into service during the First World War, I'm honestly not sure. Or maybe even the World War II green, which in a way does look similar to a number of the uh, World War I greens that were carried by um, French tanks during the First World War, so I might even try that option as well. Um, and basically, um, having the track separate will mean it'll be easier to paint the sort of the mud and rust colour I plan to use on the tracks uh, while it's not on the hull and then I'll be able to get in between all the little details down here which will of course be covered up once the tracks are fitted and then hopefully I'll then assemble the tank uh, back to its full sort of um, assembly like this and all the little details that are under and behind the tracks will all be painted up nicely. So without further ado I'm going to continue um, hacking away at this and then we're going to get on to some priming.
So as you can see, the tank has now gained its coat of primer and it's looking quite smart. I've taken this opportunity to also add a few details that weren't included in the kit. Uh, most noticeably, this uh, part of the barrel here, um, it looked like it must have snapped off in the mould. Um, so I've managed to recreate this using a bit of a uh, of, uh, leftover sprue from my armoured train. It's just about the right size looking at pictures. And that is basically part of the 75mm uh, cannon uh, there. I've also um, gone and added the two exhaust pipes, uh, one on either side. There's one uh, just behind the turret here and then also you can see the other one uh, over there. That's a bit of bent wire. Uh, I've just simply bent that, uh, that into shape and I've glued that to the exhaust uh, manifold on the side of the engine. So the next step of course now is to paint the tank. Uh, for this I'm going to be using two colours. Uh, the first of which is um, a humbrol paint and this will be used on the tracks and all the metal parts. So this is a humbrol matte 113 uh, rust and this is like I said going to be used on the exhaust manifolds, um, the fuel tanks on top of the engine there and of course the tracks before they gain their coat of mud. Now as mentioned I was had a long think about what um, colour I was actually going to paint the tank and what tank, uh, livery the tank was going to be in. And I've decided to go for uh, a grey livery um, as I noticed that a number of prototype tanks were painted in grey. Also the French used uh, grey quite a lot. And I looked at pictures and sort of went through the paint charts uh, trying to find sort of best colour which I think would suit the tank. And I came up with this. Now this is a Tamiya paint. I believe it is XF77. And it's sort of a medium grey and I think this will suit the tank quite well. So what I'm going to do now is um, basically start off by painting the rust parts, so the tracks and uh, other bits and pieces, before getting on to applying the main livery for the tank. Right, so it's been a couple of hours hand painting the tank and as you can see the Char 2C has now finally gained its grey livery and I'm really really pleased with how it's turned out, it's just how I, I imagined um, the model would look like uh, with the paint applied, I'm really really pleased. So as you can see I've gone and painted the tracks with the uh, Humbrol um, 113 rust, uh, the fuel tanks and exhaust pipes and then the rest of the model has gained the uh, Tamiya uh, medium grey. Now the next step is of course to weather and tone down the tank. So for this I plan to use some washes like I used on the other tanks and vehicles on Amiens 1918 uh, before I go over with uh, my wood filler mix um, which to create the mud effect which will then be blended into the tracks and other parts of the bodywork. So for the overall wash on this model, I'm going to be using the uh, Citadel Nun Oil. Now, I've used this on a number of my weathering projects, and it really is a good wash for picking out things such as detail, uh, like rivets and radiator grills, but also, of course, giving an oily effect to moving components, such as the tracks. So what I'm going to do now is going to go all over the model, picking out all this bits of detail, before we get on to doing uh, some other shades. So as you can see, the uh, Char 2C has received its overall wash of the Nan oil, which has really picked out all those finer details on this resin kit. So the next step now is to go over with yet another wash. This is an AK Interactive Dust and Dirts Deposit Wash. And again, like uh, the Nan oil, I've used this on a number of my weathering projects, and it gives the effect of dry mud and dirt that builds up on these sort of vehicles. So what I'm going to do uh, is use this mainly around the tracks and the lower part of the tank and then hopefully once that is on uh, the model will be complete.
So there we go, my construction video on the Char 2C tank from GRA Models. So this has been a very, very pleasant kit to build, and I hope you enjoyed watching this video. I know it's saying a bit different to the usual model railway videos, but again, I thought it would be a nice little project to show you guys. It really has been a pleasant kit to build, and I've got a couple of more ideas for this model uh, in the not-too-distant future, which, of course, will hopefully tie in a bit more with the railway-related theme and, of course, my growing fleet of ROD locomotives. So that's something to look forward to, hopefully, in the not-too-distant future. So anyway, I guess that's all for this video, and this has been SDJRCDF88 speaking, and thanks for watching.